This is your weather video for Sunday, February the 12th, 2023. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray trying a new format today for the video. So tell me what you think about it. Um, let's go out there and look at current conditions across Alabama early on this Sunday morning. Putting the radar in motion just after 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, shows a widespread area of precipitation from Alabama all the way up into Virginia and even West Virginia. Some of that precipitation along the Virginia-West Virginia border is falling as snow and freezing rain, a little bit of freezing rain there near Roanoke and southwestern Virginia. It's going to be a rougher day along I-81 there, uh, really from uh, uh, anywhere from the Virginia border up to around Harrisonburg. I'll have to worry about uh, combination of snow, freezing rain, and sleet in that area. So they'll be watching for that. Um, temperatures across Alabama now are in the 30s. Uh, 39 at Birmingham, 37 at Haleville. We still got some gusty winds going on out there. Uh, the wind advisory has expired now for central Alabama, but it continues for coastal sections. Uh, a lot of wind advisories all up through the Carolinas, northern Georgia, eastern Tennessee. Winds gusting now to 35 miles an hour at Concord Airport, right outside Charlotte. And um, still gusting to about um, 15, 16, 17 miles an hour uh, at the Shelby County Airport right now. They're reporting a wind gust 14 knots, which would translate to 16 miles an hour. This rain's going to move on out of Alabama pretty quickly. Some chance that the precipitation over northern Georgia may be back into northeast Alabama, the higher elevations, Cherokee, Etowah, up at Jackson. Uh, counties could turn over to Cab County, could turn over to some light snow or mix with some light snow. Wouldn't be too surprised to see that. Don't expect any accumulations or any problems from that. Just another uh, cool and uh, breezy day uh, with clearing skies from uh, west to east through the daylight hours across Alabama. Hey, do you remember this commercial from 1976? International Falls, Minnesota. A car sits on a frozen lake. Through January, February, and March. Then, in April, it started thanks to a diehard. The diehard sold only at Sears. So they put this car out on a frozen lake uh, and let it sit there. At International Falls, Minnesota, the nation's icebox for January, February, March. Came back in April and car started right up thanks to the Sears diehard uh, battery. Not the case yesterday. Saturday's high 47 at International Falls. Three degrees warmer than it's ever been on uh, February the 11th. Some warmth continues over the northern United States. That uh, ridge of high pressure, uh, so sort of uh, detracting from the area's image as the nation's icebox. And going to the map wall now, looking at the upper air pattern across North America, uh, showing uh, sort of dual upper lows there, one over the southeastern United States. It's brought us quite a bit of rain and miserable conditions across Alabama. Going to bring some wintry conditions to the northeast there, and another system there off the Southern California coast that we'll be dealing with uh, over this week. Let's see how the upper pattern evolves. The uh, first upper low moves on out and weakens with time. That second system off California moves into the Midwest on Tuesday. And as it does, it will um, bring a band of showers and thunderstorms our way uh, by late Tuesday night. Um, it's going to be like its upper system running out of steam. You see it kind of falls apart there. Second system rotates into the plains. Uh, by Thursday, and it's heading toward the Midwest. That system will bring a chance of severe weather to Alabama and parts of the south on Thursday. We'll watch it very closely. And then a ridge of high pressure will build in over much of the eastern half of the country. Uh, big subtropical ridge over the Gulf of Mexico, keeping it cut off there. But another system will be moving into the um, western part of the United States by the uh, early part of week two. And that will bring more rain our way as we continue to be in a very progressive system, a very progressive pattern uh, across North America for now. Uh, this is uh, the surface uh, low this morning there over central Georgia. Uh, dynamic cooling associated with the upper low could produce some snow uh, as we go through the morning hours over North Georgia. 
perhaps rotating back into northeast Alabama. Now, the precipitation is ending fairly quickly, so anything that does fall is going to be light. Uh, and temperatures, uh, the atmosphere above freezing. So I don't think we'll have much of a problem. But if we do get any bursts of snow, uh, which we can see with an upper low, you know they've happened here before, um, you could whiten the ground. I think the roads, uh, though, will stay wet. The precipitation will move out of eastern sections of the area fairly quickly. It should be out of here by early afternoon. We'll see clearing skies from west to east. Now, it probably will take uh, till. Uh, you know, most likely 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon for the clearing to um, reach our friends over in East Alabama around Anniston. Um, but uh, most of the area should see sunshine uh, by this afternoon. High temperatures across the area today are going to continue to be cool. Uh, the entire northern half of the state stays in the uh, 50s today. Uh, struggling to get to near 60 will be uh, overnight lows tonight. Quite chilly, uh, centering uh, somewhere around 32 degrees. Colder readings to the north. About the northern third of the state uh, remaining uh, below freezing uh, uh, tonight. Now, as we go into the day on Monday, actually a beautiful day. Uh, high pressure uh, takes charge. We stay dry. Um, high temperatures on Monday be a little bit warmer than those of today, uh, warming into the uh, lower 60s across much of the area. Um, and then we go into Monday night. Temperatures will drop to around 40 degrees as we uh, begin to see our um, atmosphere um, modifying and going back to a more warm and moist regime. Now, by Tuesday afternoon, surface low in eastern Nebraska, showers, uh, rain mostly there from Iowa down through Missouri and Arkansas, a few thunderstorms perhaps over the Arklatex, uh, and those storms, you know, could be uh, strong, but I don't think they'll be severe. The SPC not outlooking that area just yet. Now, that system is running out of steam. You remember that upper low was uh, beginning to fall apart. The upper system was beginning to weaken. And the frontal system will be weakening uh, also as it moves into Alabama. So this is late Tuesday night, early Wednesday, a few showers limping into here. And that frontal system will stall in the I-59 corridor. As it does, it will keep rain chances in the forecast through Wednesday. Uh, now, that system will begin to light back up during the day as the, uh, as the front moves north as a warm front. And you can see fairly substantial amounts of rain developing uh, over north Alabama, Tennessee, uh, ahead of that warm front as it lifts north. Now, we're back into the warm sector here um, by early morning on Thursday. Uh, surface low has tracked through Missouri, moving uh, into Illinois. Very favorable pattern for severe weather in Alabama. Showers and thunderstorms begin to break out um, over the uh, Arkla mix, uh, Arkla Tex, I guess, uh, moving into Mississippi as we move through the day. Now, the SPC has outlooked these areas west of Alabama on Wednesday and uh, have uh, all of the state of Alabama all the way up into um, uh, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee outlook for a 15% chance, which in effect slight risk uh, for for all day Thursday. So most of that severe weather chance would come uh, uh, after noon on Thursday, perhaps lasting into the early evening hours. Uh, the big question, you know, of course, always is is dew points. Right now we're, you know, very uh, low dew points in the 30s. Uh, but that's going to begin to change. Here you see how things begin to moderate on Tuesday uh, into Wednesday. And then by Thursday, you can see the front approaching from the west, but those dew point values will be at least in the lower 60s over north central Alabama. Now, earlier there were some hints they might be as um, the dew points might be as warm as the middle 60s, and that would be a little more conducive to severe weather. Uh, but we'll be watching that very carefully uh, because that will, of course, lead to the development of unstable air. These are CAPE values for Thursday at 3 o'clock off the GFS, showing values uh, in excess of 500 joules per kilogram over southwestern Alabama with 1 to 500 joules uh, of CAPE over the rest of the area. That is sufficient for severe weather. We would have the shear in place, um, and there would be a marginal tornado risk. So that's why that SPC outlook is there uh, for damaging winds and for the possibility uh, of some tornadoes. You know, you have to see that we have... Um, you know, thunderstorm activity coincident with the instability, and we have that 
You see this is 3 p.m. Thursday off the GFS right there on the Alabama-Mississippi border. Any thunderstorms that can develop, um, you know, could certainly uh, become severe. So we'll be uh, watching that uh, very, very carefully. Rain and thunderstorms move into Alabama late Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Uh, system uh, with a sharp delineation on the back side moving through fairly quickly. We uh, should clear fairly quickly on uh, Friday with most of the rain out of the area uh, by 9 a.m. and uh, turning uh, colder. Matter of fact, some uh, model guidance, as we'll see in just a minute, hinting that we might not get out of the 40s on Friday. So I think that's a real possibility. But you remember high pressure building in for the weekend, and that sets the stage uh, for a dry and cool, but slowly moderating uh, air mass for Saturday and Sunday. We'd probably get through Monday of week two uh, without any rain. According to the GFS, we're getting out into voodoo territory here, but it looks like another storm system is heading our way, probably arriving um, late afternoon on uh, Tuesday the 21st into uh, evening into the evening of the 21st. Very strong subtropical ridge here to the east, pumping in lots of moisture. And that means we're going to deal with um, a battle between uh, the polar Arctic air to the north uh, and the subtropical high to the east. And Alabama sort of finds itself in the battle zone. And when that occurs, we can get some pretty heavy rainfall, folks. You go out to the end of the period uh, here on uh, uh, Monday evening. Well, yeah, I guess this will be Sunday evening, the 26th, showing uh, a cool pattern across Alabama. So another cool shot uh, coming in here. Um, by that time here temperatures uh, off the national blend of models over the next um, 14 days or so uh, showing that we'll uh, sort of be on that same temperature roller coaster we've been of late uh, rising uh, into the upper 60s to near 70 Wednesday and Thursday we fall back off the cliff don't get out of the 40s in uh, many areas of the northern half of the state on Friday but temperatures march again uh, skyward toward the uh, lower 70s for the Monday and Tuesday, the 20, uh, 20th and 21st, and then uh, probably fall off a cliff again. And that will just continue until we get to the old uh, dog days of summer. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday. It's the 12th of February. Weather brains, I have to always remind you of uh, some uh, programming notes there. Had a great conversation this week with a meteorologist from the National Weather Service in State College, Pennsylvania. Um, their program for snow squall warnings uh, was implemented in the Weather Service, and they talked about how those uh, warnings are saving lives, the unintended consequences, the things they had to think about. Lots of stuff go into this uh, weather enterprise that we know and love. Uh, the show that we record tomorrow night, Monday night at 7 o'clock, uh, will feature uh, folks from the Pathfinders program, which is a Weather Service uh, program that uh, takes data from uh, vehicles and gets it into the system so that we can uh, better forecast road conditions, which uh, we always know, just like those snow squall warnings, you know, are there for when they're flash freeze conditions. We know that term all too well after snowmageddon. And uh, all of this information gradually going to making uh, our daily lives safer from weather. Well, that's my video for this Sunday. James will be here two days all week. Scott will be here next Saturday. I'll be here next Sunday, and when I get that chance, I'll always remind you to keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.